good day. The state television company Western Army represents the most important news for today, today's broadcast. The first session of the government of the Republic of Western Armenia. The speech of the Speaker of the Government of the Republic of Western Armenia. Round table discussion on Armenia. Conversation about Andanik Zoravar. Armenians rich history in Netherlands and Belgium. Lemkin Institute called for caution. Support the state television of Western Armenia. On February 24, on Saturday, took place the first session of the Government of Republic of Western Armenia. The session was chaired by the President of the Republic of Western Armenia, Nidia Markosyan, with the presence of Armenia Abrahamian and members of the government. During the session, the general situation of the Republic of Western Armenian government was discussed. Deputy Prime Minister Arman Hakopian reported and presented the work performed during the week. In 2024, on February 24, the spokesperson of the government of the Republic of Western Armenia gave a speech presenting the basically important events of the week. One of the most memorable events was the reburial ceremony of the corpses of Misak and Marine Manushan in France, which took place in the Immortus Pantheon in Paris. The ceremony was attended by Armena Gabrahamian, the first president of the Republic of Western Armenia, the French president Emmanuel Macron, French Prime Minister Gabriel Attal, former French president Francois Hollande, members of the governments of Eastern Armenia and France, legislative bodies, public and political figures. The speaker of the government also referred to the session of the government of the Republic of Western Armenia, which took place on February 17, which was attended by the first president of the Republic of Western Armenia, Mr. Armena Gabrahamian, and the newly elected president of the Republic of Western Armenia, Nidia Markosyan, and members of the government. The speaker of the government also mentioned about the 10th session of the first convocation of the National Assembly of Western Armenia, held on February 21, which was chaired by Ms. Nelly Harutsunyan, the chairperson of the National Assembly of the Republic of Western Armenia. A roundtable discussion on Misak Manushan and Artsakh resistance was held on February 23. On Friday, Armenian Culture Association held a roundtable discussion in Geneva Hall of the MGC Jean Moulin in Bordele Valence on the topic of from Misak Manushan of, to Artsakh, the Armenian resistance to occupation subject. Subject was Misak and Meline Manushan after their entrance into the Pantheon. The event took place in 2024 on February 21, Wednesday. About 40 people attended the event. The president of Armenia organization Grikula Mirzayan welcomed Hakub Gujikian, the pastor of the Evangelical Arme Armenian Church of Bursley Valence and Valence Georges Restlin, the deputy mayor of Valence and the president of the old French warriors of Armenian origin, Indrom Ardeshe. He also thanked the delegation of Western Armenia, in which were our Major General Suren Shahamyan, Colonel Viab Manukyan, Honorary Council of Western Armenia, Karapet Antonsyan, and Rone Alfes Region, and former President of Western Armenia and current Chairman of the National Council, Armena Gabrahamyan. Therefore, drawing a parallel to the resistance to the Nazi regime during World War II and Artsakh, and part of Armenia between the occupied Azerbaijan regime, the Armenian resistance is perhaps a little bold, but we must ask ourselves. Misak Manushan and his uh, friends from Armenia communist movement joined the resistance because most of them were survivors of the genocide carried out by young Turk government in the Ottoman Empire. The Turks were the allies of the Germans. And this same German Nazis again became a uh, threat to Europe, Jews, Armenians and all people. And this was one of the reasons that Misak Manushan and his friends joined the resistance. Nazi Germany was very similar to the Young Turks, Panturanism, which wanted to destroy the Armenian nation from the territory of the Ottoman Empire, as well as the Christian minorities of the empire, like the Isera Chalandin of the Pontic Greeks. Manushan fought against these invaders and occupiers. Today, since September last year, Azerbaijan has been occupying Artsakh, the population of which under the threat of ethnic cleansing chose to the Armenian. Artsakh is now occupied and destroyed where Armenians lived. But nothing is finished yet as the resistance movement of Armenians of Artsakh and all Armenians continues. The exiled Artsakh government in Armenia continues to exist. The Armenian Diocese of Artsakh continues to exist. It has not been dissolved. Actions of endurance and dedication of Armenians of Artsakh continue every day in Armenia and abroad, said the President of the Republic by opening the debate. First, the audience was invited to express their opinion about the patronization of Misak and Meline Manushan. 
The speakers responded that uh, everyone shared their feelings about the great and unique commemoration ceremony thanking France for this act which honors both the warriors of resistance and both Armenia and Armenians. The question of the unparalleled or common dread between the resistance of the Armenian resistance for his Misak Mahushan against Nazis and the current Armenian resistance against the Azari occupiers in Artsakh has sparked a wide and meaningful debate. Among the speakers were Armena Gabrahamian and George Rastklem, who also paid tribute to the presence at the Pantheon accompanied by Nicolas Deragon, mayor of Valence. Sudan Shahomian, Sarkis Jamagordzian, Virab Manukian, Grigor Der Sarkisian, George Yeretsian, and Jean Glot Der Sarkisian also had the speeches. But the debate more raged when a question was asked on how the Armenians could resist by defending Armenian and returning to Artsakh. Armenia Gabrahamian spoke in details about the Armenian resistance and readiness to defend the homeland. Sudan Shahomian and Virab Manukian, who knew the area very well, like Armena Gabrahamian, also testified persistence of the Armenians. We must unite and believe in ourselves, said Virab Manukian. These words were supported by Suren Shahomian and Armena Gabrahamian, who called us to never surrender and told some details of the Armenian resistance in Armenia. Talks about Andanik Zoravar. Hero of the National Liberation Movement, Haiduk Captain Zoravar Andanik became a legend during his lifetime due to his courage, invincibility, and victories. The people told different traditions and conversations about him, created songs. Such kind of tradition is told on a wonderful baptism of Andranik. It is said that when the priest wanted to baptize the newborn Andranik, suddenly the sound of horse hooves was heard from outside. The man come in and take the child from the hand of the priest, dips him and holy water, then give him back to the priest and disappears. People noticed that a cross was on the child's back and realized that it was Saint Georg. It was also said that when Andranik went to fight, the ballot did not touch him. Every time when he returned home from a fight, he shaked his clothes and the ballots fell to the ground. Saint George cross protected him always. This tradition is interesting in that, that the birth and baptism of Andranik are accompanied by miracles as usually happened with the heroes of epics and myths. The guardian cross engraved on the body resembles the guardian cross of the war cross or cross liturgy, engraved on the arm or back of the heroes of the epic of David of Sassoon. That flying cross protects David of Sassoon until David mystically swears falsely on the cross and loses its protection. According to some stories, the cross turns black and begins to burn David. In order to cool off, David enters the water where he is killed. The Lemkin Genocide Prevention Institute recalled the red flag alert statement. The institute expresses concern over the alarming pro potential of an Azerbaijan incursion into Sunik Mars to build a Zangizur corridor for the exclave of Nakhichevan controlled by Azerbaijan. The Lemkin Institute issues another line based on the renewed aggressiveness of the Azerbaijan state after the re-election of the President Ilham Aliyev in 2024 on February 7. Lemkin Institute is happy to see that the European Union and the United States are taking steps to support Armenia in the result of the genocide committed against Artsakh people. We want to make it clear that Azerbaijan is a genocidal state that has rapidly shown that it does not respect international law and peace treaties. To influence Azerbaijan's future actions and avoid yet another regional conflict, Western authorities must take systematic measures to immediately withdraw any military funding and threaten to freeze investment and trade if Azerbaijan does not back off its building risk actions. Since 2023, September, Azerbaijan invaded the territory of the Artsakh Republic and emptied it from Armenian citizens, who made up of 99% of the population. The Azerbaijan government has started to refer to Armenia's unique region as West Azerbaijan. This geographical name invalidates and ignores the Armenian national identity, the internationally recognized territory, and the indigenous historical presence in the region. References to Western Azerbaijan are particularly alarming in the context of the ideology of Pan-Turkism, which is one of the Azerbaijan's main political commitments. Pan-Turkism promotes the idea of the single Turkish nation and ultimately a Turkish state which stretches from the Balkans to Central Asia and includes areas inhabited by Turkish-speaking populations. The Zangezur Corridor is of a strategic importance as it represents a potential land bridge that connects Turkish people with Nakhichevan and the rest of Azerbaijan. In case of depriving Armenia of its uh, southernmost unique region, it will mean 
could almost completely to surround Armenia with its powerful historical elements, to cutting ties with its southern neighbor, Iran, having with two have important economic ties. The Lemkin Institute should emphasize once again the fact that the genocide is also expressed through the denial of the territorial integrity of the natives. Many Armenian merchants from Amsterdam went to Dutch colonies of Southeast Asia in the 19th century to trade and establish factories and plantations, establishing communities of Armenians in places like Java in Indonesia. The Napoleon Wars put an end to Armenian people's existence in the Netherlands. The city of Amsterdam was almost deserted after the occupation by the French. The Armenian presence in Belgium, however, did not break through the centuries, although the size of the community did not begin to increase significantly until the end of World War I and the forced mass exodus of Armenians from Western Armenia after the genocide against Armenians. During the 20th century, Armenian immigrants in both Belgium and the Netherlands became quite successful in the trade of carpets, tobacco, diamonds and other jewelry. In the cigarette industry, the original Armenian brands such as Tavros, Arax, Maruf and Enfi were the only cigarette brands produced in the Belgium. The Mysirian, Chemkersian, Matosian and Efiagian families had a monopoly on the tobacco industry in the country. Another field in which the Belgian Armenians stood out was the diamond trade. A member of the Parsamian family was the president of the prestigious Diamond Club of Belgium in 1920, at a time when the Cherkessian Ibejian and Hambartsumian families were leading names in the business. During World War II, some Armenian soldiers were brought as prisoners by Germans from war to the Dutch province of Zeeland during the Nazi occupation, where special battal battalions were formed known as the Armenian Legion. German Battalion 812 consisted of only Armenian soldiers and was stationed in the Dutch islands of Zealand province, especially in Middle Harris. There the Armenians interacted with the locals and marriages soon began. This chapter of Armenian history in the Low Countries soon turned very tra tragic as almost all Armenian soldiers were executed by the Germans after the Armenian uprising. Due to the active role of Armenians in the resistance of the Netherlands, the Dutch government commemorated those brave Armenians by erecting a memorial. The television of Western Armenia, being faithful to its principles and viewers, continues its uninterrupted work with new approaches. As you already know, our television does not engage in self-promotion. It mainly broadcasts the history of Western Armenia, present and future. We broadcast news having political and other contexts, as well as news that raises various issues. We also present the political transition of the President of the Republic of Western Armenia, the government, the National Assembly, and other structures in a transparent and accessible manner. Dear compatriots, with your support, the possibilities of our television will be further expanded and strengthened. We are strong together. This was all for today. Goodbye.